ओम पूर्णमद पूर्णमद पूर्णा पूर्णमुदच्य पूर्ण से पूर्णमादाय पूर्णमेवशिष्य ओम शांति 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 बिगिन मिस्टिक सॉन्ग बाय श्री स्वामी ललितानंद प्लेड इन संग बाय श्री स्वामी उमानंद एंड रजनीश आवर सॉन्ग टुनाइट इज कॉल्ड ओ होली मदर टच मी
We are recording from the ashram of our revered Guru, Puja Atman Sri Swami Jyotir Mahananji in Miami, Florida. Today is July the 20th, 2018, Friday evening, and tonight Swamiji will be lecturing on the Tulasi Ramayana. This is series 2016, class number 114. And now, Puja Atman Sri Swami Jyotir Mahananji. Om Nilam Bujashyam Alkom Alangam Sita Samaro Pitavama Bagam Pana Umaha Sayaka Charu Chapam Namami Ramam Raghuvanshanatham Erudition's Lord Rama, whose complexion is like a blue lotus, very tender and delightful in appearance. Sita is seated on his left side, is carrying a powerful bow and arrow in his hand. In Sri Ram Charitmanas, the Ramayana, Balakanda, and verse number is 286. Presently, Rama has broken Shiva's bow and all obstacles that presented themselves have become cleared. Rama is going to marry Sita. <laughs> will, they live, will they live happily ever after? Yogi, we try to understand. That becomes the basis of Ramayana. Marry Sita, it is for the sake of Sita. Rama has to go through all his heroic activities and I have explained to you Sita means Viveka Buddhi, intuitive intellect. Soul is never a whole. <laughs> Soul develops illusion that I am confined to the body. I am the body. This illusion Every individual and the ego in you, this is me. This is like so many parts. As there is water and there is reflected suns. And each in each part, the reflected sun creates that I am. I am the one. And builds up many illusions. But the reality behind the reflected sun is the absolute, the, the sun. How can that reality be realized? By developing, not by ordinary intellect. Ordinary intellect is a baby stage of your intellect. Mm -hmm. That intellect, led by your good karmas, led by your many positive impact that you have from guru and scriptures, there comes a stage when deep down in your heart develops that will that no longer I will be satisfied with the world. See, all that doesn't spell out but it becomes your inner feeling. When that has happened, 
Rama in you has broken the Shiva's bow. And is going to be wedded to Viveka Buddhi. That joining with Viveka Buddhi soul, that instead of leaning upon the world of illusions, now lovingly joins with purity of intellect. And both develop a mutual relationship. Viveka Buddhi arouses Rama. Rama frees Viveka Buddhi from troubles. There is a supplement complement relationship. In storyline, Rama marries Sita. And at that time of marriage, there's a lot of display of celebration. Amazing. Imagine how people celebrate Christmas. Just, just a tiny bit, or Diwali, or Holi. Same way that type of description is given. But behind that description, you must understand, the spiritual movement is not a historical movement. And you are not joining with personalities as you advance. Celebration implies a profound change occurs in four aspects of your personality. Action, action becomes karma yoga. Feeling in you follows the path of bhakti devotion. The willing aspect of your mind follows the path of jhana meditation. And understanding of your heart, the purpose of having intellect, is fulfilled by jnana yoga, where you allow the intellect to discover its intuitive potentiality, and not just to stay with gathering the facts of the world. When that is happening, <coughs> great changes go on occurring in your personality. You may not be aware of it. Sometimes people join in with celebration, and they are just blind blinded by lots of smoke and lots of <laughs> colorful powders floating in the air. So you don't really know what's happening. But all that you know, you are celebrating. <laughs> Their celebration is put into a <laughs> allegorical way, like physical celebration. The reality behind Rama's marrying Sita is internal. Big changes occur in your personality. And just to remind you, I have stated this before, but I will reiterate what we mean by flowers. See, God shower flowers. This comes from Agni Puran. <laughs> Ahinsa prasamam pushpam vitiyam indriya nigraha sarva pushpam daya bhute pushpam shanti vishishyate samaha pushpam tapah pushpam dhyanam pushpam cha saptamam satyam chaivashtamam pushpam etai tushyati keshava Eight types of flowers. First flower, ahimsa. A heart that is not holding on to grudge against others. And a heart that enjoys doing good to others. Once you are developing that, you have offered best flower to Lord Narayana in your heart to Lord Krishna, to Lord Rama, to the Divine Self. 
Until then, you are offering withering flowers. But even that is perfectly good, at least to have the idea of offering. So ahimsa, the second flower, indriya nigraha, which means keeping your mind and senses disciplined, like in a chariot. Horses must be under the control of chariot driver. So that type of personality, you are not the being led by uncontrolled mind, uncontrolled whims. You wake up in the morning, you don't know where will whim will take you away. <laughs> so, that, so that ability to keep the mind and senses under control. Each thing that I am saying is a progressive attainment. You don't attain it by simply listening to it. It takes its own course. So that's the second flower. Sarva Pushpam Dayabhute. Compassion towards all beings. Compassion. Human heart naturally is compassionate. When you develop cruelty, you are turning away from your spontaneous quality that is there in your heart. Good qualities are spontaneous. Negative qualities are artificial. Being peaceful, that's sad. But When you put a slogan of peace in a big paper <laughs> and put it near your deck, <laughs> I'm peaceful. <laughs> That's an artificial movement. <laughs> but practice artificial virtue <laughs> until it becomes natural. What all I am implying that practicing virtue requires much less effort than holding on to vices. For protecting each vice, you have to create many more vices. To protect one of your lie, you have to take <laughs> whole ducks of lies. <laughs> That's why people say, conduct, duct. <laughs> so coming back to this. And peaceful state of mind, shanti, that's a special type of flower. In all conditions, allow yourself to be serene, peaceful. Peaceful here in this shanti aspect implies do not hold any contradiction. Try to be touched by God's presence within yourself. Because the world is being handled by God, not by your ego. So do not let the ego howl, but <laughs> don't, don't go after it. <laughs> And remember all the peace chants. 
Shamaha Puspam. And as you advance with the practice of, or as peace enters your heart, your mind will be, will, will enjoy serene, serenity, even in adverse situations. The mind doesn't enjoy serenity neither in positive situation nor in negative situation. If you are not disciplined or do not follow the path of yoga. In positive situation, mind becomes developed a tickling type of feeling. It should have been more positive. Why did I win a lottery that is only 50,000? It should have been 50 million. <laughs> I'm joking. Each time a person becomes positive in his life, something happened, mind doesn't enjoy relaxation. He immediately likes to invite so many people and start drunken party and all that. So neither do you enjoy serenity when positive has happened, and of course you can't enjoy it when negative has happened. But if you have, you are enriching in a, yourself in a spiritual way by practice of integral yoga, then that's the goal before your mind. Not being swayed by happenings, no matter how things happen. And you have to allow yourself, by your own experience, how to lead your mind to serenity. Therefore, serenity is considered one of the gatekeepers to liberation. See, four gatekeepers. Shama, serenity. Satsanga, good association. Santosh, contentment. And vichar, inquiring mind. Mind that flows on to understand who am I. Next pushpam is tapah pushpam. Tapa is developing the spirit of austerity. Austerity, if you are patient, that's the part as an austerity. Someone has shouted at you and you don't react to it, it's an austerity. You have eaten too much and next day you control your food. <laughs> <laughs> That's an austerity. <laughs> you spoke lousy things, now make a punishment to your tongue. I will observe mana, silence, for such a certain duration. See, all these are giving you little kid type of stuff. <laughs> but all that becomes important. Every effort that you do, to discipline yourself is called austerity. So austerity term should not be a shocking term for your mind. So majority of people when they hear austerity, <laughs> it becomes something not so pleasing to the heart. So once you have developed the right spirit of austerity, then it gives you great delight facing any adversity instead of being sinking in dis despair. You enjoy being patient and discovering patience in your personality. That becomes the flower the divine flower that you offer to God. Dhyanam pushpam and practice of meditation as the mind flows in on the path of meditation, that's all flower. And finally, the revelation of the truth, that's the ultimate flower.
and flower is called suman. <coughs> Your mind is called man. Suman, each flower as you are developing, the mind enjoys a special type of delight. So if your mind is not ordinary mind, it becomes suman. Filled with joy. This is the subtle meaning behind all the celebrations that are described in the Ramayana. But now we'll come to the storyline. Tadapi jai tumha kahu ab jatha bansa vyavaharu. We go back one more, one step. Kahamuni sunu naranatha praveena raha vivahu chapa adhina. King Janaka approached Sage Vishwamitra, having offered adorations to him. He said, by God's grace, Rama has broken the Shiva's bow, and Rama and Lakshmana, both brothers, have brought immense delight to my heart. Now tell me, O Sage, what should we do? what will be our further project. And that reminds me of my project. And Sage Vishwamitra said, the marriage, according to your condition that you have laid out for marriage, that condition has been fulfilled. So practical point of view, Rama is already married to Sita. And this is well accepted by gods, human beings, nagas, snakes. When you talk of gods, human beings and nagas, these are all allegorical terms. Gods, intellect, higher feeling, they are gods within you. Then there is a human aspect. And then there is a snakish aspect. You allow negativity to sneak into your personality. Every human personality is a blend. Different scriptures give it in a different way. Sur Nara Asur, that's Upanishad gives how Prajapati, Brahma, gave his message and Three personalities came to receive Brahma's instruction. Gods came and Brahma said, Da. And the God representative moved away when he was asked, What do you understand? That Brahma has asked me to practice Dhamma, control of senses. And Brahma said, yes, that's correct meaning. Human representative also listens the same word, the. But he wasn't present when the other person was contacting Brahma. And when he is asked, do you understand? Said, yes. What do you understand? Dan. We always tend to be selfish. We should be always generous act of charity. So the human in you progresses by being charitable, serviceable to others. God in you requires to assert him 
the godly presence by controlling mind and senses. And then Asur. The third is Asur. Asur that creates disharmony in your personality. Just like in a musical <laughs> field, there is Sur aspect where everything is in harmony, melody flows in a nice way. And then, when melody begins to flow in a discordant way, then it's called asur. It's a musical term, sur and asur. And they have gone, gone into human personality in the scriptures. Sur implies gods, asur implies demons. And those demons can be also described as snakes. And how are those? The demons, they receive the same word. And when they are asked, do you understand? They say, yes. We are very cruel. We should be compassionate. So if you are bringing three aspected da in your heart, then you are real, real prasad. <laughs> da. <laughs> Which means controlling the mind and senses. Being charitable, living your life not just for yourself but serving others and developing compassion. And your personality becomes well integrated. So, when Rama broke the bow, all the three levels of your personality were impacted. That's what is described that all the gods knew, the news broke <laughs> and Rama's news went viral. <laughs> all the gods knew it. <laughs> Human beings and the Nagas, snakeish ones, they all knew what had happened. If Viveka Buddhi enters your personality, it is going to impact your entire personality in a very subtle way. Tadapi jai tumma karahu jab ab jatha vansa vyavaharu Bhuji vipra kula vridha guru Veda vidita acharu Vishwamitra says to King Janaka that even though it's been already accomplished, Rama has married Sita. But uphold your family tradition and social tradition. And in order to follow that tradition, be guided by Kulvridha, wise old people in your family. Kulvridha. Not just Vridha, but <laughs> not just old, but old and wise people who have gone through their life. Receive from them their blessing and their instruction, how should they conduct. And Vipra, ask your priest and guru, whoever has been your spiritual guide. So every spiritual project must be in harmony with experienced people, spiritual personalities, and, and, and spiritual guru.
दूत अवध पुर पठ बहु जाई आ नहीं नृप नृ दश रथ ही बोलाई मुदित राउ कही भले ही कृपाला पठ ये दूत बोलित ही काला सेंड योर मैसेंजर टू किंग दशरथ था एंड इनवाइट दम विथ मैरिज पार्टी एंड लेट देयर बी मैरिज सेलिब्रेशन अकॉर्डिंग टू दी परंपरा अकॉर्डिंग टू दी ट्रेडिशन फैमिली ट्रेडिशन and that's a simple point to understand when you turn to people in a country whether it is india america <laughs> things that are done in alaska the way the tradition is held is not held the same way in new york even in florida north florida will not do exactly south florida does. there will be always some variation even languages vary but that's not an obstacle that's simply a joyous expression of and harmonizing with different types of people and their different tastes that's a powerful quality imagine a society that has only one way of thinking only one way of dressing <laughs> they like blue they all come out blue the car all come out singing <laughs> in that so that a child cannot grow <laughs> variations have their meaning and they bring nourishment to your heart and remove your boredom so It's, it applies to in society it applies in your sadhana so accordingly that now vishwavitra who has told king janaka send a messenger and invite king dashratha and follow the traditional way traditional way whole party will come from the bride room side they called baratis <laughs> and they will go through many religious uh, rituals one of the ritual will be bride and bridegroom cloth will be knotted together joining <laughs> and they go around fire seven times adoring the fire god as light through that i'm just going higher step what has been brought to the masses is in a subtle way in a subtle introduction to your ultimate movement seven steps leading to liberation sapta bhumikas shubhachha aspiration that first step vicharana you begin to reflect you develop a reflective mind tanumanasi you enjoy 
attenuation of impurities, impurities, anger, hate, etc., you see them gradually cut down. Sattvapatti, they don't stay cut down, they are rooted out. And the mind is completely inundated by enlightenment. And after this, one enjoys the profound expansions that happen in different steps. Fifth step, one sees the entire world as, as an act of maya. Just like if you are dreaming and suddenly a sense of awakening comes while you are dreaming that it is all dream. It's not something foreign. Many people have that. You are dreaming and you come to realize it is a dream. And you are not awakened yet. But the moment you come to realize it is a dream, you have no longer any attachment. See, in your dream you have plucked a lot of mango fruits. <laughs> you are not now worried about taking them to your waking state. <laughs> So much so, in your dream, you may be climbing a, a ladder and see your, yourself fall down and breaking your legs. And you are just amused. <laughs> so I'm giving you this illustration. Similar movement, progressive. It doesn't, that detachment doesn't occur suddenly. But as you advance, your happiness is not dependent upon happening. You go on flowing towards Godward movement, irrespective of how things are. With the understanding all these things are based on how your mind is operating. It is called Asam Sakti. Live in a world with detachment. And then this stage ripens further. You just like said with the dream. In dream you realize dream is an illusion. And still dream continues. But then comes a stage you actually wake up from your dream. Dream is no more. Your consciousness comes to that state. All this is just, just this sky. I am this sky. All happenings are like clouds. And the sky has nothing to worry about. All the clouds and their noise and all their thunder and lightning can't do any harm, not a single scratch. So that state comes called padartha bhavana, all padartha of the world, all objects, all experiences, all things that are real to human consciousness, they move away. And finally, you are not dealing with what has you have to transcend. You can simply shine as the absolute, Turiya. These seven steps they go through, husband and wife, you see, bride and bridegroom, to secure their relation. Within that relation, what they are being taught, that you are practicing being related to God. In all relations, that is the purpose. How should a mother behave with a child? In that relation, you are being drawn to how to love God. Discover God within yourself. See, when you see a child, you become loving. <laughs> so you are discovering your love. 
And you see, how cute. <laughs> so in all relations, the deeper point, deeper meaning behind it is to discover love of God. And God is everywhere. Keeping that in view, we go through now what's going to happen. Bahuri Mahajan Sakala Bolaye Ayi Sabani Sadara Sirunaye King Janaka. invited all great personalities whose advice he always needed whenever he had a big plan. And they all came, bowed down before King Janaka. And the king said, all of you, go and decorate everything about this city, markets pathways, temples, the entire city. Let me read the verse for you. Bahuri Mahajana Sakala Bolaye, Ai Sabani Sadara Sirunaye, Hata Bata Mandira Suravasa, Nagaru Samara, Chari Humpasa, Decorate this whole city and it's described heart, bhat, mandir, surabhasa. Heart, heart is not heart. <laughs> In the word heart, pathways. When there is celebration going on, then there are many people come together and create a little, little huts and sell wonderful toys, fascinating things they present just for the people as they are walking, for them to see, entertain them, that's heart. But, market, the whole market opens up. All this again to give you a broader meaning, default. <laughs> Heart is foot movement, karma yoga. Allow your karma, daily duties to be decked with something beautiful. Hmm? Bart is your mind, it's a big market. See that that market doesn't have monkey business. <laughs> Mandir, your heart. Bring those bhava pushpas, flowers in your heart. Survasa your deep unconscious. Go on creating good samskaras for your unconscious. If you are doing that, then you are creating a, a joyous festivity in your city. The whole city becomes festive. City is your whole personality. Make your personality a festive personality. Because Rama in you is going to marry Sita. Harashi chale nija nija griha aaye Puni paricharak boli pathaye 
रचहु विचित्र वितान बनाई सिर धरी बचन चले सच उपाई ऑल दो पीपल हु वेर इंस्ट्रक्टेड दे वेन टू देअर होम्स एंड दे बीकेम बिजी विथ वॉट किंग हैड टोल देम टू डू एंड द किंग summoned servants and ordered them to create a special pavilion mandap pataye boli guni tin nana je vitan viti kushal sujana and technicians went out to look for all those who were especially skilled in the architect in creating the mandaps the special pavilions vidhi banditin kin arambha virche kanak kadalike kambha kambha and the all the best of skilled technicians architects join together and they having adored brahma offered prayers to brahma they started creating the mandap they created pillars that look like banana trees but they were all gold and <laughs> emerald very strong pillars they were like holding the whole pavilion you don't take it literally this is the way it is being described <laughs> but internal movement you have to figure out you are building our your internal pavilion with not ordinary natural support we have supernatural support when brahma provides those support but when you have a deeper movement to attain liberation a divine grace enters and creates something beyond brahma's imagination that why it is brought to durabar in other words it excels brahma's creation when you develop desire for liberation it is excelling brahma's creation because brahma's creation is meant to keep you interested don't be confused brahma is same god but just like in the teaching process if you are not qualified then your teacher will keep you in early in, in lesser stage qualified the teacher will allow to go but the teacher who belongs to a particular standard a primary school teacher will stay with primary school so brahma stays with the primary school of this world process and anyone who develops special qualities to go beyond this whole world to attain liberation brahma's eyes glitter <laughs> nothing in his creation is like that and he likes it hmm? every father sees <laughs> likes the child to pro to flourish and a fresh in child is put on the shoulder <laughs> he sees more than what father sees <laughs> and father is not upset by it <laughs> try to understand this positive joyous movement harit bani ne ke patra phal 
पदुम राग के फूल रचना देखी विचित्र आति मनु भी रंची कर भूल एंड स्पेशल प्रेशस मेटीरियल्स दे गो टू कंस्टिट्यूट लीव्स एंड फ्रूट्स एंड फ्लावर्स so the whole pavilion seems extremely unique so unique manu viranchi kar bhool even brahma looks at it and he becomes surprised there is nothing in his creation that matches with that liberation doesn't match up with the verbal creation you have to understand that <laughs> self realization is not a content of creation brahma's creation is like illuminations of the sun you enjoy illuminations so many types of rainbows shimmering lights in this in the clouds so many reflected suns all these illuminations staying with the illuminations is called brahma's world going beyond illuminations and discovering the sun and more amazingly you are that sun that transcends brahma's creation कनक कलित अहि बेली बनाई लेकिन अहि परई सपरन सुहाई ऑल डिफरेंट डिटेल्स आर देयर दे क्रिएटेड क्रीपर्स अ बेटल लीव्स पान यू सी दैट इन इंडिया पीपल एंजॉय after food betel leaf with some little spicing with it and suck it and with lips turn out red <laughs> <laughs> and there all these are artificial not not the real देखी देह कह के रचि पचे बंध बनाए बिच बिच मुक्ता दाम सुहाए एंड इन देयर डेकोरेशंस ऑफ क्रीपर्स एक्सेट्रा देयर आर कार्विंग्स यू कैन इमेजिन इन द मॉडर्न वर्ल्ड देयर सो मेनी थिंग्स amazing toys etc similarly same imagination the city was decorated in a special way kie bhring bahu rang bihanga gunjahi ku jahi pavan prasanga and they created also many artificial black bees colorful birds and they sat among those big bowers that were created by all artificial materials and they were set in such a way as the breeze blew a special noise and sounds came out from those birds is not something different it's you can see in modern times you have things they give, they send you a card and you open the card and the card starts singing <laughs> <laughs> the, 
They give you a bouquet of flowers with little birds in it. And the birds actually <laughs> do better than the outer birds. <laughs> but why <laughs> Sulsidas is using these entertaining words, <laughs> pointing out to all these great qualities exist in you which cannot be described by words. But when your happiness and joy is to be brought into the world, this is the description. <laughs> but it is it's so surprising that it excels even Brahma's imagination. Movement towards God realization he is the theme behind it. Nothing in the world can match up with that project of attaining God realization. Chonke bhati aneka purai Sindhura mani mai sahaj suhai And many platforms were made out of elephant tusks and different types of special costly crystals. Saurava Pallava Subhaga Suti Kie Nila Mani Kori Hema Bhaura Mara Kata Dhavari Lasata Pata Maya Dori And out of nil money, special, very costly jewel, blue, these architects created mango leaves, artificial leaves made out of that nil money. And out of gold, they created blossoms of mango flowers. And they created lots of bunches of flowers and they were all threaded by a special silk thread. You can further go on imagining how many things were. <laughs> but this is the description of your enrich enriching your personality through sadhana. All this begins to happen, but you don't have to be worried about it. They happen. The big architects. <laughs> <laughs> they put current fool in your ears, <laughs> so your ears begin to hear th things that are extremely divine. <laughs> they bring a special specks in your eyes. And you see the glory of God around you. And go on imagining that way. All this becomes possible here and now. You don't have to wait for to go to heaven. And with this I will conclude. Om Puna Madha Puna Midam Puna Puna Mudachyate Punasya Puna Madaya पूर्ण में वावशिष्यते ओम शांति 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 If you have a question for Swami Ji, please raise your hand. We'll bring you the mic. Namaste Swamiji. 
in scriptures it is um, said that um, devotees of Lord Vishnu um, when they are liberated they go to Vaikuntha and um, spend time with the Divine Lord and um, devotees of Shiva go and uh, stay on Mount Kailash can you please um, explain whether this is allegorical or uh, literal mm -hmm. descriptions. Thank you. This is allegorical, and <laughs> it is to match up with the mind of the questioner. People have, if you are told, <laughs> you are fascinated to know what happens in liberation, and if someone were to tell you the absolute truth, <laughs> that nothing exists, Brahman, the absolute energy, alone is the reality. All this is big zero to Akwa. <laughs> if you are in that level, that's what Buddha taught, see Nirvana. All this is nothing. And, and people who were worshipping Shiva and Vishnu, they became exceedingly upset that they are doing all the worship to go to nothing. <laughs> what I'm trying to say is a Sanskrit saying, ekam sat vipra bahudha vadanti. Truth is one, absolute. But sages say in different ways to match up with the different minds. A mind that, if you are told suddenly about the absolute, then you, you will not be interested in sadhana. But when you are told, you are going to get, what are the things do you like? The Guru will ask. <laughs> oh. Now you will go into Vishnu's place and you will have all the ice creams that you want. <laughs> all the milk pudding you want because he is lying down in the milky ocean. And you will not be worried about calories because you won't have body. <laughs> so you will be enjoying constant music and dance going on in heavenly world and sipping the <laughs> and in that direction <laughs> there is a, another religious sect that says that you go to heaven and will find toasted ch chickens flying in the air <laughs> All that has nothing to do with the reality. As you move on, then you discover what the reality is by your own experience. Reality cannot be described in mental language, no matter how advanced your mind. And that is, that reality is Vaikuntha, that is Kailash, and that is Nirvana, or whatever you call it, the kingdom of heaven. Okay. Mm-hmm. <laughs> 